Hello and welcome to another Intro to Programming tutorial. In this tutorial we will going to be learning about how you can go about accepting values from users. So we will going to be looking at input statements. In the past we, will, we have looked at flowcharting symbols for output. We have looked at flowcharting symbols for terminal. So the input flowcharting symbol is exactly the same as the output flowcharting symbol. Let's first look at a business problem. Then we're going to go about creating a flowchart to solve this business problem. In the past, we have written a business problem which will display a person's first name and person's last name. Now we want to write a business problem which will going to, first of all, accept from the user the user's first name and user's last name and will then going to display the user's first name and last name together, joint. So in order to do this, we're going to first of all start the process by taking an input from the user. So in flowcharting, we will going to start our flowcharting exactly the same way that we have done before with the terminal symbol in the flowcharting group. So we'll click and we're going to draw our flowchart, which is for start. And then after this, I need to take an input from user. So I will going to draw my input box. So back to in insert tab and I'll going to grab my input. And I'm going to drag and draw my input. So now I'm going to tell the user that I would like you to input first name. This is the message that I'm giving to the user that I would like you to input your first name. Then I would like to ask the user to input their last name. So I use the same shortcut key that I told you before, control D which duplicates an item. So I input the user's first name and input the user's last name. Then I want to display this information back to the user. So I will going to go back into the insert shape. I'm going to grab the same symbol, but now I'm going to be using it for display purpose. So I will going to do output or display full name. And then I'm going to stop this process all the way down here. So this is just an overview of this process. Of course there is there are a lot of details that needs to be worked out in order for this to be a successful flowchart. Now we're going to look at the template design for this flowchart in a graphical user interface environment. So we're going to be going under Microsoft Visual Studio. So I'll click the start button and I'm going to open Microsoft Visual Studio 2012. In the coming tutorials, I will going to introduce you to the concepts of variables and data types. Then we will going to revisit this flowchart and we're going to rewrite this flowchart. I'm going to then write the pseudocode, which will going to reflect that flowchart and it's going to be a much easier trans transition. So this is just a little brief overview of the process. So I'm starting a new project and I'm going to call this new project user input and this is a Windows form application click OK it's creating the project once it creates a project I will going to set up my environment and we're going to be using the same uh, writing, uh, writing uh, naming convention for the objects as we have learned before. So I'm going to grab my label here. This is going to serve as my first name label. I'm going to grab another label. This is going to serve as my last name label. Then I'm going to grab a couple of text boxes where I'm planning on taking my input from user. So this will going to be my label for first name. So I'm going to click on label one. Under text, I'm going to write first name, and this is my second label. That under text, I'm going to write last name, and now I'm going to name my object. So I'm going to call my first label LBL first. I'm going to call my second label LBL last. I'm going to call my first text box txt first. I'm going to call my second text box 
txt last. Now, the way it looks like at this point, if I save my project and run it, it will going to give me a form which is ready to take an input of first name and last name. However, however, it doesn't do anything else with it at this point. We still need to work on the logic of simply taking the first name and last name and converting it into a full name. For this purpose, I will going to draw another label here down below, which will going to serve as my full name label right here. We're going to change the name of the label to LBL full. And we will going to change the text on the label to full name. And then we're going to bring in a text box down here, right next to the full name. We're going to name this text box txt full. OK. Now in VB GUI environment, nothing happens automatically. So if I'm in the start button and I have begun to start writing my first name and then I type my last name, I need to have some kind of an action in place so that if I click on a button or if I press an enter key, then this first name and this last name should actually get transferred into the full name box. So in order to make this happen, I'm going to bring in a button into this equation. So here is my button, which will going to perform an action for me later on. So let me name this button BTN, BTN join, because he will going to be joining the first name and the last name. And I will going to change the text on the button to join name. And here is the join name button. Now I need to write the action on the join name. In order for you to write actions on any of the objects in VB, we call it event handling. So we are basically adding an event. Event pretty much means user performing an action and the code responding. That's basically what an action is. So I want my code that when the user clicks on the button, I want my code to grab the text from the first name and then grab the text from the last name and put it all together down in the full name. So at this point when I'm running it, my button is supposed to be doing nothing. So as I enter my first name, as I enter my last name, and I click button, it doesn't do anything because I've not written any code behind the scene. But before I take you to that, let's first understand how you go back and behind the scene. So if I double click on the button, it will going to take me behind the scene. Now this private sub form one load, I by mistake double click earlier in this tutorial that added this event. Let me just backspace out of there. I just deleted it. So here is my event that I want to pay a little bit of emphasis on as to how this is being read for now without going into a lot of details. This is a, an event handler. It's a procedure that I'm writing. It's a sub procedure. The name of the object on which this event is written is called the button join and the event is click. That means when someone clicks on the button things will going to happen this way. So now we need to be writing a logic of grabbing the data from the two of the text boxes and putting in the third one. Now before I do this let me put a comment here and let me give you an example from an algebra. If you have done any some algebra, you probably might have seen something like this, x equals to a plus b. What basically we're doing over here is we are taking the contents of a and we're taking the contents of b, we're adding the two contents together, and then we are putting the sum of the two contents in x. So x is the holder of the contents, and a plus b are the values that will going to be placed in this container called x. That's exactly how we will going to perceive this example. In our example, let me take you back to the design mode, the container that will be receiving the value will be this container, which is txt full. The value providers will going to be first name and last name. And with numbers, we put plus to add the numbers. With strings, string is anything that comprises of text or alphanumeric data. We use a concatenation operator which pretty much puts two strings together. So that's exactly what we're going to be following in this example. So I'm going to write txt 
full, I'll, I'm just following this example x equals a plus b as it is. I'll, then I'm going to modify this. So for now, you may see some errors. We're going to be fixing those errors. So equals to txt first plus txt last. Now, of course, this is not the correct statement in VB. That's why you see the blue line. Blue line in Visual Studio means you have made an error. It's a syntax error. The language does not support this feature. So let me take you back to the design mode. If I want to change anything in the face value for any of my objects, that's done through the text property. Similarly, every text box also has this property called text. Whatever you put in the text property, actually goes into the text box. So we will going to be utilizing this property. So what we will be telling the VB behind the scene is, I want you to change the text property of full name by grabbing the text from the first and then grabbing the text from the last and then putting it together. Okay, now in VB, if I now run this code here, there, there are evidently no errors here. So it doesn't give me any syntax error. So I put in my first name and I put in my last name. Saad is first name, last name Yusuf. I click join and VB goes. This is the combination of first name and last name. It puts it both together. It just concatenates it. This is the terminology that we use. It concatenates it. So this is a concatenation operator. However, we have made one logical error. The logical error is I have not left any space between Saad and Yusuf. There is no space. So what I'm going to do is I will going to add another concatenation operator. And between the two concatenation operators, I'm going to add a space like this. So if you notice, I'm grabbing the first name, text. I'm putting in a space. Then I'm adding to that my last name. So now when I try to run this again, I'm going to enter my first name. I'm going to enter my last name. And I'm going to click join. And here's my first name, space, last name. If you're using earlier edition of Visual Studio, like Visual Studio 2010 or before, then instead of a plus sign, you may have to use ampersand, which is also a concatenation operator, which is mainly used for strings. So if I use the concatenation operator ampersand, the code still works. So the later versions of Visual Studio are backwards compatible, but the earlier version of Visual Studio will going to force you to use ampersand, and the pluses may give you an error in some cases. So I'm just writing both codes in the comment. I'll just copy and paste this. I'm going to write this in comments that just in case if the code below does not work, you can try ampersand, which is the concatenation operator in VB. So here we have been able to accomplish what we decided in our flowchart. We need to write a flowchart that we're going to accept an input and another input and concatenate the two and display the output. Hope you would have enjoyed this tutorial. Catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching.